right, good morning. We are in the international lesson. We're into October. It's not going to be long before Christmas is going to be here, right? We're starting to get the cooler days and nights. Uh, but at least we're getting some, some dry weather. And that, we've been under rain. I thought I was going to have to build a boat and, uh, and go around collecting animals and, and uh, stuff for, for a thing. But the rain has stopped and it'll come back again. But uh, we're getting closer and closer to Christmas. But we're also getting closer to uh, Thanksgiving, which is a holiday of giving thanks. And even Halloween, in its original form, was a church holiday. It, it means All Hallows' Eve. And the main day of Halloween is All Saints' Day, which is the day that follows Halloween. And uh, it's a time to remember that yeah, we have a lot of people that we call saints, and they're, they look like they're special, and sometimes they have a halo above them. But All Saints' Day reminds us that we are all the saints of God. We're all special in God's eyesight. And, and so that's a, that's a good feeling uh, to have. That he thinks all of us are special, um, and he loves us in that way. Well, we're looking at the Psalms uh, today, and um, uh, we're looking, there, there are different Psalms. Um, there are Psalms of praise. They are Psalms that just um, excitement about God. Uh, one of those uh, is the Psalms 8, which goes, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. See, it's a psalm that just talks about God and his greatness. And, and it talks about man as being special to God. Now, you can look that up in your Bible. That's a very short psalm, uh, but it's a very beautiful psalm. Uh, I memorized that when I was a kid, much longer before I memorized the 23rd psalm. I knew Psalms 8. Um, the 23rd Psalm is again uh, a psalm of praise to God, mentions more of how God cares for us in that in times that are good, like green pastures, times that we could be scared, like dark valleys, um, and, and all of that. And there's a lot of psalms. Psalms 103 is one that, that picks up on, on the praising of God. There are also psalms that we call laments. There are psalms that, why God? Why did you do this to me? And you'll find some of those. Uh, next week we will look at a psalm of lament, the 22nd psalm. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There are a number of psalms that, that say, God, I, I, I'm in the pit here and I don't know why. Those are songs of lament. Then there are, are here's a, a, I could call them vindictive psalms. They're really called technically imprecatory psalms. That's a big word, imprecatory. Vindictive. They're psalms that are angry. Um, Angry at God for not doing some things sometimes, but angry at people. And, uh, and the people have, have been mean to the psalmist uh, and, and they hurt him. That, that comes up a little bit in the 22nd Psalm, but not as much as in like Psalms 139 and Psalms 137, I think it is, uh, <clears throat> where the psalmist says, I hope you take their babies and hurt them. Oh my goodness. I can't imagine that God would listen to that prayer, but people uh, who are hurting, you know, will feel that way, and God doesn't stop loving them because of that. He just reminds us that that's us. We sometimes uh, don't think, but God, God's mercy is never ending. But that's that's those vindictive psalms. And then there's this this type of psalm, which is Psalms 51, which we call a penitential psalm. Uh, now you've heard the word penitentiary. That's a, uh, another word for a jail or a prison. Um, they're not so much there, that's the idea, is not so much to be there for punishment as it is for thinking about reflection, thinking about what you did wrong and looking at life from a different perspective. And that's where we get our word repentance. It comes from the same word as penitentiary. Repentance means to be sorry or sorrowful for what we've done, to have remorse. Uh, for what we did. Uh, and that's the idea that, that, so this is a psalm uh, that talks about the person doing something wrong and they're asking God to forgive them. And that's what Psalm 51 is about. In the Bible, this is how the title is for, it, it says, now this is not in the scripture itself, but it says, a prayer for cleansing and pardon. And then in the superscription of it, which is in the Bible, to the leader, a psalm of David, when the prophet Nathan, Nathan was his 
personal prophet. He, he spoke to David strong words sometimes and strong comforts other times. When prophet Nathan, uh, prophet Nathan came to him after he had gone into Bathsheba, uh, he took a, another man's wife to be his and had the man killed uh, to do a terrible, terrible thing. That here, here was a man who was claiming to be a follower of God and, and had uh, uh, done some great things for his people. Israel was their second king. Saul was the first king and, and his son Solomon would be the next king. But he did that terrible thing. And the Bible has it in the book of Samuel where it says, When kings go out to battle, David remained in Jerusalem. That's, it's setting it up. He should have been out there with his soldiers. He should have been out there risking his life, not just his soldiers' lives. And, and so that comes out of that. So uh, Nathan comes to him and he says a story to him. He said there was a man who had one sheep, just one sheep. And, and they, the whole family raised it just like a pet and kept it in his home. But there was another man who had lots of sheep. And he had a, a friend come to his house. And he was going to fix a meal for him. He said, I don't want to take one of my sheep. I've got lots of them, but I don't want to. I'm going to take that neighbor of mine and take his sheep. And he stole it and, and took it and killed it and prepared it as a meal. Well, Nathan uh, told that story and he said, what do you think of that, David? And he said, that man who did that, who stole that poor man's one lonely sheep should die. And Nathan said, you're the man, David. You're the man. And he told him what happened. See, Nathan knew. I don't know how God revealed it to him, uh, but he did, and, and he said that. Now, there were consequences for it, but David wrote this song about his plea to God for forgiveness. I'm just going to read uh, a little bit at the beginning, and then I'm going to talk about it a little bit. All right? Uh, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. That's that's the word hesed, and it also translated mercy. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgression. In other words, he's not denying anything. He can't hide it. It's, it's there. Um, I don't know how public it became, but Nathan knew what it was all about. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. There's another word for sin. So we got a bunch of words for sin there. Um, uh, my transgressions, my iniquity. Uh, and then he'll use the word sin down here. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Uh, you get the idea. This is pretty serious stuff. He's using a lot of words that go there. Then he goes with another new word. Well, no, it's a word he used before. For I know my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Now, I stop there because... David is acknowledging what he did, but he said, it wasn't against Bathsheba that I sinned, it wasn't against Uriah, her husband, that I sinned, uh, and whom I had killed. Well, yes, it was, David, but the point of it is, is God is saying, David, your sin against them was a sin against me. And Jesus said in the New Testament, if we do a good deed to somebody in need, then Jesus said, you did it to me. And as much as you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. Now the other side of it is, if we hurt somebody, if we pick on them, if we call them names, in as much as you did it to the least of these, you did it to me as well. And that's what we have here in this situation, is David realizes what he did to Uriah, what he did to Bathsheba, was a sin against God. And God had every right to destroy him. Now he didn't. But when David wanted to build a temple, God said, no David, you got blood on your hands. What you did to Uriah, others, I, I, I'll let your son build it, but I won't let you build it. There was a consequence to it all. Now, in the penitential Psalms, the first thing we know uh, is that um, there, there is no blaming others. David does not look for other people. Now, you'll find some psalms that, uh, particularly the laments, and they'll say, oh, Lord, these people are being miserable to me. They're, they're picking on me. I'm sick of it. Uh, they, they, uh, they're like a bull, uh, you know, trying to gore me. And, and uh, 
Doesn't. And he has, therefore, no words of, of things. Like, God, just kill them all. Kill them all because I hate them. And you must hate them because I hate them. See, and that's, that's making God in our image, not God making us in his image. Because he doesn't want to kill. The Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to a knowledge of righteousness. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there's, there's the penitence, there's the remorse, that sorrow that's there in, in terms of it. Being aware of our wrong and, and realizing it has consequences. And, and no one's to blame but ourselves. Now, go back to Adam. Think about Adam in the garden and, and Eve and they eat that forbidden fruit. And God comes along and says, Adam, Adam, have you been picking fruit that I told you you shouldn't eat? Uh, what's that, Lord? Uh, you've been picking my fruit, which I told you not to. Uh, uh, but it wasn't my fault, Lord. It was the woman you gave me. You know, and he passes the buck. And guess what? When he talks to the woman, Eve, he says, Eve, did you eat of the tree that I told you not to eat? When there was all kinds of other trees here to eat from. And you chose. Now, God knew that she had done that. Knew Adam had done it. But he wanted a confession. And you know what I got? Excuses. The woman said, the devil beguiled me. And I did eat. Uh-huh. You aren't able to be an individual and think for yourself. Uh, there's a, a thing called group think. I remember studying it in psychology uh, when I was going for my degree. And group think is when everybody thinks in the wrong area. Because it's kind of like uh, 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 follow the leader. And one person does it, and, and so what must be okay? And so another follow another. Pretty sure. It's like birds in a flock. Uh, if you see them this time of the year on the, on the lines, one flies off and they all fly off. And they follow around and they come back up on. A group think is when we do something and afterwards we look back and say, how could I have thought that way? But that's, that's kind of what happens a lot of times. In, and and we, we have no one to blame but ourselves uh, in terms of that. Now, so we've got penitence, remorse. We've got no blaming of others. Uh, no excuse, sir. Um, I think of the, the old spiritual. It's me. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me. And that's, that's kind of where David boiled it down to was. It wasn't the fault of, of Bathsheba. It wasn't the fault of Uriah. Certainly not them. Uh, it wasn't the fault of Nathan, the prophet. It was David's fault. And, and James says that in the New Testament. He says, we, no one can say that God tempts me. We are tempted when we are drawn aside of our own desires and when temptation is fulfilled it brings on sin yeah now you don't have to yield to temptation but too many times we do and and uh, you know it's kind of like my my granddaughter um, when she's sitting at the table she's six and uh, she'll be sitting there with her family and one of them might have something different than what she had and she'll say that looks good can i have some now, she wants their plate, and, and many times she doesn't give the plate back. She just finishes it off and, and stuff like that. I, she's going to be a blimp before she gets done, but she, right now she burns it all up and stuff. Uh, but that's, that's kind of the thing. Um, we, uh, we want to blame others. You, you put that plate down in front of me. Now, I can say that to my wife. Don't put that, that plate of cookies down, because if you do, you're going to have a dirty plate to clean, because I'm going to eat them. And, and such. So, um, you know, it's her fault, not my fault, right? No, that won't fly in God's eyes. It's my fault. All right, now there's another thing. Uh, there's, there's a remorse, there's no blaming others, but there is a feeling of being dirty. A feeling of being dirty. And, and so the words that come across there many times are wash, cleanse, um, uh, uh, Purge, that, that's a, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. That word purge is an interesting Hebrew word. It means unsin. It's a negative with the word sin, unsin. Um, now, we, there are some words that we can do that, that work with that. For instance, if I say, well, that was clear, then we know that I understood it. But if I say that's unclear, that means I, I, don't, I don't understand that. If I say the bed is made, 
then we know that I put the bed back with the covers where they should be. But if I say the bed is unmade, it's a mess yet. So this word purge means to get it out from being a mess. Make it an unmess or uh, you know whatever needs to be done in that in that way and, and so he goes on to talk about that now sometimes we think we're pretty good uh, until we get caught in something we shouldn't have done and I've been there more than once okay uh, I can tell you stories of things that I did uh, and I'm not going to tell them to you but I'm going to tell you a Bible story Jesus one time was preaching by the sea and uh, uh, this was before Peter was, he, Peter knew about Jesus, but he hadn't really become his disciple yet, and such, and, and Jesus is preaching, the crowd's getting tight, and, and Peter steps over to, uh, Jesus steps over to Peter, and he says, Peter, can I get in your boat, and you push off the shore a little bit, and then I can still talk to people, which is an amazing thing, because um, the Sea of Galilee, like other seas of water, will echo back the words, so it's like an amplifier that he had there. And, and, he, and he talks to the people. And I don't know all of what he said. I mean, we don't have all of what he said. But Peter, when he's done, Jesus says to him, Peter, cast out into the boat, out to the deeper part. And, and Peter does. And, and then uh, Jesus says, Peter, throw your net over. And, and Peter wonders, you know, it's daytime. It's not nighttime fishing. And Peter does. And, and he has such a catch that it's unbelievable. And then his statement comes to, he says to Jesus, Depart from me, Master, for I am a sinful man. See, Jesus didn't tell him, Peter, you're a rotten scumbag. It's just his movement with Peter and what he did that made the difference. And that's what uh, um, penitential sin, uh, uh, prayer, is all about in those psalms. It's not that God says, I want you to realize how bad you are. It's God wants us to realize how much we're loved and we need that forgiveness. Um, Paul says, there is none righteous, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah, but Paul knew what it was to be forgiven and knew what it was to have another chance. Now, the last thing that is I want to point out there, and, and my time is up, is in verse 12, where it says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Willing for what? Willing to be strengthened to do the right thing. Uh, so sometimes we have a bigger won't than we have a will. You know, uh, I will do it. No, I won't do it. I, I remember when my kids were little and I would say, uh, you come with me. No, I won't, you know. And, and uh, you know, they were stubborn about that whole thing. So I took them down to the police station and let them have them. Uh, no, I didn't do that. Uh, but, you know, he wants to be, he remembers something. He remembers uh, a good thing. And it's gone. Right now he's feeling estranged or away from God. And he doesn't like that feeling. He wants to feel. And we can have that with people too. Where we've had a separation. Where we've had a disagreement. And it leaves us uncomfortable. And, and we want to restore the right relationship. And, and that's what they've... I, I, I've had that many times. That I didn't really want to talk to the person. Because I felt like I needed to apologize and deal with it. But I'll tell you, after it's over, and sometimes it doesn't work. I, I've had people that uh, refuse to accept my apology, and you can only apologize and, and, and let it go at that. Um, but most times people will accept it, and, and you've got a, a, a healed relationship. Now, it doesn't make it all hunky-dory, okay? Because you do remember that we had that falling out, and, and you don't want it again. But, you know, you still may disagree about something. Uh, but you want to have that brokenness restored. In the Book of Common Prayer, uh, which I keep in my Bible here, uh, there's a, uh, uh, a phrase that uh, uh, I, I love it, from the old Book of Common Prayer. It says this, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have offended against your holy laws, 
we have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. There's David. He did things which he should not have done. And then there's this phrase, and there is no health in us. In this Psalms here, he asks God to heal the things that he has broken. Put it back together. Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare them, O Lord, which confess their faults. Restore them that are penitent. There's that word penitent. According to your promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may after, hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. Wow. You can't beat a prayer like that. That's as good as they come in terms of, of things. Well, we conclude that Psalms with those words and, and with God's forgiveness. And the only thing to say is that in the end of that Psalm, uh, that David says, I'm going to teach others of your goodness. In other words, I got a word to say about how gracious you are to me. All right, and God's gracious to us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day and for what you have to teach us in this Psalm. And help us to realize how your mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, see you next week.